All right, fight fans, this is our last amateur fight before the pros begin. And who's ready to see a big boy fight over 500 pounds in here? This fight is brought to you by Triple X Cage Fighting. You can find them online at txclive.com. First up, making his way to the cage, fighting over the red corner. Put your hands together for Mike Chaos Hooper! Twenty-year-old Mike Hooper making his way to the cage. Weighed in 251.4 pounds, bringing an amateur record of eight and three to the cage. Coming to us from Warren, Michigan. Fighting out of ground zero. He is the elite federation of fighters. Heavyweight champion. Carnell Giles, an extensive amateur record, 22 and two. Fighting out of Columbus, Michigan. Big dog boxing. His last fight, a nine second KO, so hardly a fight at all. Now, if you've been following amateur mixed martial arts, you know that he's been around for a long, long time. Former XCC heavyweight that, uh, champion, that's going back a couple of years. WXC Super Heavyweight Champion and the Capital City uh, Cage Matches Heavyweight Champion. 22 and two, a complete and total stranger to losing and looking to keep that relationship the same coming into this fight tonight. All right, fight fans, this fight is brought to you by TXCLive.com. It'll be three three-minute rounds, and your referee in charge is Brandon Gallo. To my left, fighting out of the red corner, he weighed 251 pounds, stands six feet tall, comes to us with a record of eight wins, three losses. He trains out of ground zero. Once again, put your hands together for Mike Chaos Hooper! And to my right, fighting out of the blue corner, he weighed 260 pounds. He stands six foot two inches tall. He comes to us with an outstanding record of 22 wins, two losses. He is trained by Jim Smedley and Adam Russo out of big dog boxing. Once again, put your hands together for Cardinal. Teddy Bear! All right, fight fans, when we get started, fighting out of the red corner, Mike Hooper in the white and blue fight shorts. Carnell Giles fighting out of the red corner in the black compression shorts. And hold on to your hats, because Carnell Giles loves to push the pace. Look at the intensity of Carnell, too. Oh, a straight right hand down the pipe, beautiful. Kara, his last fight was a nine second KO. You know, he sits in the pocket nicely. After he, make, he fires, he makes a defensive move, looks for an angle. Well, you remember Carnell back from the XCC days <laughs> right. when uh, oh my gosh. His, his claim to fame was, uh, you know, former football player. And he just came in flat out, tackled people and beat the snot out of them. His, his hands and his footwork have really tightened up over the years, as you'd expect. Yeah, and he, he, just the way he, he's on defense right in the pocket right after he fires is beautiful. Just looking for openings. 
Takes Wisely a lot of guts separating. to sit there. Now, he went for that right down the pipe because his opponent is a southpaw, and he just got to go right back there. Look for the twos, the threes. There it is, oh, that two right, right down again. the pipe. And he's putting his twos and threes together. You know, his hands are getting a little crazy after he throws. He's got to bring them back up just so that they are fire more efficiently and faster. But until you meet someone that you're, you know, really concerned about, then your hands come back. Oh, Mike Hooper look. looking to turn through and throw him over, but Carnell a little too tight to the body for that to happen. Big knee to the inside of the thigh oh, of Mike Hooper. Is in pain from that. I don't think he's going to be able to take a few, any more of those. Well, Carnell caught him right on the femur, right between the hamstring and the glutes there. And you could see him just wince in agony. Oh! Nice hip toss. <laughs> Carnell immediately back to his feet, though. Well, you know, Carnell, I think just a little bit lax, not feeling threatened by his opponent, and, and that kind of thing's going to happen if you relax a little Especially bit Especially when much. you drive forward as much as he does. The challenge is when you throw that hip from there, it's really hard to maintain control as you come over the top, especially if the guy's already going to his belly, and Carnell immediately back to his feet. And this is where Carnell, I would just like to see him separate and just go for that. Oh, big up. knee up the center, Kara. Caught Mike Hooper square on the chin. Mike now trying to drive that head a little deeper through to avoid. Well, Mike's just trying to look for a safe place to be, and I just don't think it's in the cage with Carnell. I'll tell you, he's got a lot of heart, though. He just keeps he totally driving does. and keeps working. Looking for those body shots. Nothing on him, though. No, nothing. But at least he's trying to keep him occupied, trying to keep those knees down. I'd like to see Carnell just pull his footwork all the way around, spin Mike's back to the cage. He's looking to bring that cage. big knee up again. This time right in the center of the chest. I don't want to see that. And again on the chin. I want to see him spin out and let his hands go. Let me tell you something. I've never seen Mike Hooper. Oh, a little uppercut. He sneaks inside in between the elbows of Carnell. I've never seen Mike Hooper fight before, but this kid can take it on the yeah, chin, Yeah, can he ever. He's taking some big shots from a guy who knocks people out with one punch. Yeah, he's got a lot of heart, that's for sure. Well, he's making it out of round one. Who'd have thunk it? Ten seconds left. Gonna go to round two here. You know what, though? I think it was Carnell's fight uh, to give away in this round in terms of he could have had it ended. He could have just put his hands together. When you see Mike Hooper walking over to his corner, he doesn't know he's been hit, Kara. <sighs> I mean, look at him. He walked just like he came back in. There's, I'm surprised. He's not phased by those big I'm shots. I'm surprised he you know, recovered so well from those knees, to, not even to the head, but to the legs, because we saw him you know, buckle over and some of those leg shots. Well, he's, he's walking tender on that right leg right now. Yeah, I think, but I think he's going to try and do the same thing. He's just going to get in there and try and close the gap. He does not want to be at the end of any of these Carnell punches. Well, the only advice you can give him at this point is one-sided, as that first round was, was just hope that you can tire Carnell out and, and catch him when his hands are down. Well, you know Carnell's going to come out and fire. What you should do, try and faint, draw the punch out, and get underneath Carnell's punch. I mean, in an ideal world. Have you, have you noticed that to be part of his skill set at this point? <laughs> I haven't. I don't know what is <laughs> at this point. So well, let's try anything. Well, he's got a lot of heart, that's for sure. Oh, my gosh, yeah. And, I mean, giving Carnell a fight that maybe he thought he would run through. All right, fight fans, here we go. Round two. This TXC undercard underway. Mike Hooper in the white and blue shorts. Carnell Giles, black compression shorts. Oh, you know what? Carnell shot this sneaky little uppercut, then a right hand down the pipe, which is what he's got to go back to. You're fighting a southpaw, get your foot on the outside, and just pop that two right down the pipe. Oh, and he gets hit with almost an overhand left from Mikey, which is making Carnell a little more intense. And that's well, what he should be. I mean, he should look to get these guys out of here. Yeah, but you need to fire, not drop your hands and sit there and talk. Yeah, exactly. I mean... And maybe it's made him stop and think too much. And he's got to just go back to his game plan. Don't think. Don't try and evaluate. Just go forward. Because I've got to tell you, in all the fights I've seen Carnell fight, I've never seen him take a big shot. No. I, his, he, his chin is untested, at least in my my uh, uh, viewing, you know. Well, I think he just needs to that, put them together now and, and take this guy to here. You just never know what someone can throw towards you. Looks for the jab. He's got to just drop that too right, right behind the jab. Let it go. Especially when you see Mike come in with his hands so wide. Well, Carnell getting really tired, Kara. Yeah, is he, he ever. almost tripped as he came around the side he here. He snuck a nice right uppercut down the pipe, and those knees up the center, Mike's going to try and prevent those again. Well, Mike, Mike has to have a, an answer for that tie clinch like that. And as big as he is and squat as he is, it's actually a pretty easy But I'm thinking if I'm, if I'm a... Oh, look oh, at that arm, Kara. Arm up tight. 
I, I don't even want to see the doctor have to put this back in. Oh, and he's going to spin around and well, avoid it. Look he, at that. He had his own left arm caught, and he didn't know to get it out. Finally able to get it out. If Carnell had figure four to his own legs, this fight's over. But I have to tell you, if I'm Carnell's corner, I want to see something bigger from him when, you know, you're hoping to go pro. When you're 22 and 2, you're thinking about the pro game. You better have better wind and be able to get someone like this out of here. And you better know what to do when you hit a guy and he doesn't go down. Yeah, oh, exactly. Good point. Well, somehow, Mike Hooper able to weather that storm. He's got to yeah. be careful. He doesn't allow Carnell Giles any separation. Because Carnell will punch him right through the bottom of this cage. Yeah, including his own hand. Oh, and there he's got that full mount, belly to belly. He's going to posture up and let it rain. I'll tell you what, Mike. Uh, uh, Carnell sorry. almost looks like he's taking a break because you would think he would posture up and just let it go. Well, the problem is his, his thighs are so thick that he, and the belly is so round, he's worried that if he separates, he's going to get bucked and rolled because there's no gap between the belly and, <laughs> and his thighs. I'm not kidding. The belly blues. No, that's, that's a problem big guys have. They, ha they sit higher already because of the body shapes, and it's a lot easier to roll a guy who's mounted on you. Oh, Mike needs to, get his, uh, he needs to get his back to the mat, but going to be able to make it out of this round. Steve, he's made it out of two rounds. And I have to correct something earlier in the dim light. I read his record is eight and three. Yeah. Oh, it is eight and three. Eight and three. I'm crossing right. up other cards now. <laughs> <laughs> About to conflate him it's with hard to see under Jamie Espinosa. Espinosa. Oh, yeah. You know, but he doesn't look, when you're looking at Mike Hooper right now, he doesn't look like he's dead. I'm going to need you to keep talking. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> ring curl. Ring I'm being relaxion. really creepy right now for the fans at home. <laughs> you can't see it because of where the camera's you know, at. I, 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 if I'm Carnell's corner, I'm telling him, I need to see something better out of you right now. You have 24 fights. You have a fantastic record. you got to get this guy out of here. The problem is he throws his punches out and he swims his arms down. He's got to be able to pop him right back, pull his thumb right back to his face so he can ring off these punches a lot faster and not throw them like haymakers where you can't recover and throw behind one punch. All right, round three underway. We're about to get underway here. Here we go. The final round of this final undercard fight, TXC Legends here in the fashionable Macomb Music Theater, Mount Clemens, Michigan. You know, and look at the heart on Mike Cooper. You know, he doesn't have anything really on these punches, but they threw a nice right uppercut, actually. But he's taking, I mean, these are nice straight down the pipe shots from Carnell. I mean, they're, they're beautiful. But this crowd wants to see that big KO, another straight. He's got to turn his hip into it, though. He's throwing it beautifully, but he's got to turn his hip into it, turn that back foot. And really do a lot of damage. When Carnell can stand in the pocket, he's very efficient with the way he throws his punches. So it really is like resting for him. A lot less work than being on the side of the cage right now, trying to hold up the 260 or 50 plus pounds <laughs> of Mike Chaos Hooper. Man. Mike's biggest enemy right now is his clock, Kara. Because if he doesn't knock out or submit Carnell Giles, He's not walking out of here but with the But you know win. what? He's In his mind, he probably is. He's like, I went three rounds with Carnell Goss, who knocks people out in nine seconds, and I went the distance. You know, some people evaluate their Has performance differences. Has any fighter you've ever wanted to train thought that way? That I've trained? That no, because I've no. kicked them out of the gym. But I mean, exactly But there right. are a lot of people, you know, with people like, oh, I went the distance with so-and-so, you know. It's big for the resume. Looking for the over... Looking for the overhead headlock. They're now stepping into a guillotine. Armin guillotine really tough with big bodies I like this. They're, they're, Carnell's in trouble, Kara. I think he's going to be too sweaty. He's in a little trouble no, here. That I, hand coming around the chin I, now, though. I just don't see he's going to be big in trouble. Big thumbs up. No. Which is good for the crowd just to get them excited about maybe a momentum shift. But Carnell's going to end up posturing up and laying some leather. Once that chin slipped under the hand there. You can see Carnell Giles giving the thumbs up right now, content just to ride it out till that head pops out. For a second, though, that was on deep. <laughs> Both of these guys exhausted at this point. Coming up on short time here in this third and final round. You know, Carnell's corner just a little bit. Now, everything excited. I said about Carnell not wanting to create separation when mounted, in the guard, he's got no reason not to separate and drop big, big shots. Sneaks just a little dirty boxing uppercut in there. Trying to get some separation and just 
See Seems that tired. Lazy work in the guard because of the fatigue has put his back on the cage and Mike Hooper smelling a little blood. The question will be, is there enough time? He needs to give up on this arm and just start dropping big leather on the head of Carnell Giles. Body shots are not gonna do it. Both of these guys exhausted. 10 seconds left. This one's going to the cards. And after that first round, I mean, I didn't think we were gonna end up going to the cards, but you know, obviously a shutout for Carnell Giles, but uh, I don't know how you evaluate your performance after this. Well, I'll tell you what, what he, when he was the most successful was when he stood in the pocket yeah. and boxed. Yeah, exactly. It's just his problem is he doesn't return his hands to his face, so you can't fire behind that. It's going to be a lot of time in between your two shots. you got to bring them back up so you can ring them off and get the guy out of there. And Mike Hooper going three rounds, taking some big shots, big knees. I mean, there were a couple of times he got cracked right on the button. And with the exception of one where he sort of dropped a little lower to drive his head in deeper to avoid the follow-up, completely unfazed by the heavy, heavy hands and knees of Carnell Giles. Should the judges tally in the cards here, but again, this one gonna be no surprise Carnell Giles' hand going into the air here. His 23rd amateur win. Last time I was number four, so I didn't do it this time. But if I need it, Kara, it's 23 to our... 27.30. All right, taking a little time to tally the cards here. I don't know how hard it is to, to add up uh, 30 and 27 three times. Did you need, did you need a card for me? Okay, um, 30-27. Last time I was the fourth judge, so I didn't turn in a card this time, and apparently this time I was the third. But again, this one easy. All right, fight fans, into the cage. Kara K.O. Rowe with your official TXC decision. All right, fight fans, let's hear it for both of these fighters tonight, bringing you an action-packed fight. After three rounds of fighting, we go to the scorecards, and we have a split decision. Your winner, by split decision, put your hands together for Carmel.